Kamala Harris accomplished everything she needed to last night. She needed to accomplish a lot. Knocked it out of the park. Now, the vice president's known for being a politician who really prepares. And it was clear that she took her debate prep very seriously. Philippe Reines is a former deputy assistant secretary of state and former spokesman for Hillary Clinton. And Reines played the role of Donald Trump in Clinton's debate prep back in 2016. Uh, there he is in what appears to be a kind of like a flip phone video in costume, role-playing a scenario where Trump tried to hug Clinton and then chased her around the room for said hug. Reines reprised the role of Trump in Kamala Harris's preparations for last night's debate, self-tenor and all, and he joins me now. Uh, Philippe, it's good to have you. First, what do you think of that debate? I could watch it all night. I mean, she put on a <laughs> clinic. There's really, I mean, there's no part of it you can watch that says that's bad. She should have redone it. It was a remarkable performance. I know the former president is saying the same thing, but as usual, one of them is lying and one of them is not. What, so tell me, take me through the prep. First of all, what was your approach in that prep to playing Trump? And what are the kind of signature things he does in debates that you were doing? And then how was that kind of gamed out and prepared for? Well, first, you know, I, my role in it is the kind of sexy part of it, but I really just had to focus on the left side of the screen, which is him. There's a team that helps the vice president that was headed up by uh, Karen Dunn and Rohini Kasula, who, I mean, it was amazing. And it was a frictionless team that I've, you know, I've worked with other teams and it was great. The vice president has great people around her. Um, I mean, it was not just the two of them, but they co-ran it. From my perspective, you just want the candidate to get used to what they're going to see and hear and experience. Mm. And it was that added oddity that they never met. And what's great is I had never met her. Um, the first mm. day that I met her, I said, Madam Vice President, it's nice to meet you. And then 20 minutes later, I was telling her how she was ruining America. Did you, um, what was your approach? What are the most important things to prepare for if you're debating Trump, like the, the sort of go to moves, the things that might rattle someone who hasn't been been in the same room with. Them. Well, I, I would take it a step back. I mean, a debate in its ideal form is a job interview. You have two people who are going for the same position, who want to put their experience and their best foot forward. They want to be professional. They want to think about curveballs that might come their way. And, and you know, we've all been in that situation. The situation we haven't been in is when the other candidate for the job is six feet to your left and they've got a chainsaw and the only way that they can win is by, you know, blooding you up. And the challenge there is, you know, you have to make some decisions. But the, what she did last night that was so amazing is that she, she wasn't just um, pointing out things that uh, that might get under his skin. She was making her case directly to camera to the American people. She was talking about her plans. And what what was also incredibly amazing is that she did something that no one else has really been able to do in the last year, which is remind people that this guy actually served and has a record. And that yes. record is really bad. And, you know, you've talked about this. This amnesia issue is a problem where he starts out saying, you know, you completely screwed the border. It's got to be, hold on, pal. You were there for four yes. years. You were in charge of the border, and you promised us a wall, and it's not there. And that hasn't happened enough, and it's important to lay out that case. And, and third, I mean, from my own in terms of asking about prep, first of all, you know, we all get makeup before we're on TV, and um, the makeup artist here said, you already have makeup on? And I said, no. And she said, well, you've got it on your forehead. I can't get it off. I mean, it's, it's so caked on. The guy uses, you know, like plaster of Paris. But the thing that I noticed over the eight years, and by the way, I feel like it was 50 years when you say a flip phone. I mean, yeah. it, it wasn't black and white, Chris, um, <laughs> is that he's really, he's really decompensating. I mean, his mm -hmm. language has always been choppy. He's always digressed. There's something else going on there. I think we all watch it and it's like, oh, he always speaks like that. He does not. He's losing. Like if I lose track of my thoughts, I stop for a second. When he loses track of his thoughts, he just goes to another thought quickly. So it doesn't sound like anything. Yeah. It just sounds like he's jumping around. <clears throat> That's not what he's doing. He's also seemingly he'll go off on COVID for 10 minutes and not say Tony Fauci. I mean, four years ago, he would go on for five minutes about Tony Fauci. So there's something, 
you know, I'm in the camp that has always noticed that, but just very narrowly in terms of watching everything he has said and done over the last few months and reading every word, there's there's something not not right up there. Yeah, and, and you know, we'll only play a little selection. And one of these selections, which we'll play in a second, is the is sort of notorious. They're eating the dogs, they're eating the cats, which of course is both a, a sort of disgusting and racist slander to a group of people and also completely invented. Um, but that answer came, he started on the rallies. Like, the, we played that rallies clip. He got from, like, people go to my rallies to that, and, you know, he, he, he cannot follow a train of thought. He interrupts himself. Here's just a little smattering of what that looked like. She's a Marxist. Everybody knows she's a Marxist. Her father's a Marxist professor in economics, and he taught her well. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. She was big on defund the police. In Minnesota, she went out. Wait a minute. I'm talking now. If you don't mind, please. Does that sound familiar? He was very proud of that last one. He, he referred to it as cute, and he gave a little kudos to himself afterwards if he was, like, calling back a I'm speaking moment. In, in terms of the sort of set pieces, like, the baiting, what, how much of that was planned? Like, it seemed to me that there were certain things that you know he won't leave alone. John McCain, Charlottesville, very fine people, the outcome of the January 6th election, his rallies that were intentionally seeded in her answers to get him to narcissistically obsess over them. I think, look, you know, she has seen him over the years. The guy's debated seven times. This was his seventh general election. He debated, I think, 11 times in the primaries, uh, notably zero times in the 2020, pri 2024 primaries, and yet he calls everyone out for, for being scared. I think she was almost acting like she was watching it. Like she was, you know, yeah. kind of watching it on TV and saying, hold on, dude. I mean, what about this? Because that's what she was doing was calling out facts. You know, what's what's particularly, I think, telling when you show these clips of his digressions or whatever you want to call them is that they make no sense. So fine. You, you, he's not Rubik's Cube. He's not hard to figure out. He's Jenga. You know, you just push one right. thing and he falls apart. But if you say your crowd sizes are low and you people leave... Why wouldn't you say that that's not true? That's very mean. I'm really proud. They're the biggest things. What he actually starts doing is a different level of insanity. Yes. I mean, you're revealing it's a subset. I mean, what he's saying has never been truthful. It has never been real. It has never been normal. But it is decompensating. And I think because it's, you know, the thing about the frog you know, in water, if you just boil them slowly, they don't know what's happening. We've all been so kind of inured to it that we don't realize how serious this is. And look, I, J Joe Biden, I love Joe Biden. When Joe Biden was 78 and he ran for president, no one thought, I don't, I'm concerned of how he looks. Donald Trump is 78. You know, if yeah. he wins, we could be back in this conversation in two years. Did you? And like, oh, we, how, do we, how are we supposed to know that he was going to go off the rails? Did you do off the rails as him? You do everything. I mean, you do. I'm the ball machine in my mind. You know, right. you get a good tennis player who right. wants to get better. Right. Um, I have friends who are obsessed with tennis. They get a tennis pro. You want to test your your, you know, backhand. You set the, the ball machine to test yeah. your backhand. You want to do your forehand. If you want to use the ball machine as a target for your serve. Great. Um, it's really, it's simulation. It's, I think, any kind of prep, whether it's congressional prep, deposition prep, or any kind of interview, you want people to have thought things through. It's not like you're sitting around saying, okay, here is a good line, memorize right. it. There's been some great stories that I'm sure you know that I, you know, people would love about the biggest moments in debate history have been the candidates thinking about them when they're not in prep. Yeah. You know, um, Lloyd Benson, the I knew John Kennedy, he he didn't. He actually snapped at his team when they said Dan Quayle might say um, that he knew Jack Kennedy. Dan, Lloyd Benson apparently said, if you guys are going to waste my time, I'm not going to. He walked out of the room. George Bush, when, you know, Al Gore crowded him, he had the smirk on his face. And Bush has said that the smirk on his face was because his team had crowded him in the hotel room. 
And he said, what are you doing? They said, well, Gore has sometimes done that. He's like, I don't care who's done that. Get out of my face with that. Right. And then yeah. when the moment comes, you're like, holy cow, I've heard this. Philippe Reines, thank you very much for your time tonight. Appreciate it.